Let's have a good time. Um, salute here from Austria to my friend Pavel Kowalczyk. Is that uh, pronounced right? Yes, yes. Pavel Kowalczyk. Poland, Poland, Poland in the house, man. How's this, how's this, how are you doing up there, man? What's new? Are there regulations finally over in this crazy time? Uh, please, please repeat. Are those lockdowns now over in Poland? Can you... Can you go to any facilities without restrictions and uh, some kind of, you know, those crazy measures? Yes, there actually, uh, most of those restrictions uh, were put down. So we have like, uh, we can actually go to the gym uh, in like one month. So from, from the time we were doing a lot of training, uh, mostly when there was a lockdown, most of the people like, I believe like, like in the, in the whole world, They were actually resting their bodies, like stretching and getting more stronger. Uh, I also did like, you know, gym in my house so I can uh, train all the time. But I wasn't training all the time. It was like half of this lockdown. Uh, I was training and then I was, you know, getting into the diet and resting and cooperating with my friend uh, Tomasz Nemono-Modarski. Right now, since uh, the gym is open, uh, I just got back to the work. So I just started to do one more time personal trainings. And it's really good. I actually, I actually enjoy. Uh, I actually enjoyed even those lockdown time, times because yeah, I, you know, saw, I saw your Instagram stuff. So when I, I actually can share your screen, you will, you will see. I saw this. Uh, you training here. You can see my screen. Yes, yes. <laughs> I saw you yeah. training in that tight spot, and I'm like, damn, man, that's really you know tight area to train. I mean, I'm a tall dude. I don't know if I if I could. If I could pull out the guts or get the guts to throw some crazy shit out there. I've seen you doing cork, hypers, cork D-legs. Like then hitting at some stage, you hitting the the heater, metal heater, I think. Yeah, thank you very much. I mean, uh, at the beginning when I was starting uh, doing tricks, I actually... Uh, had the pleasure to uh, to use a similar gym. It was actually much bigger, uh, but you know, this uh, confidence from years back actually was useful to use it in this in this room. So, I mean, I, I met you back then through Ahmad, I remember, man, that just now seeing the this gym here, the hangar, that's, that's where you, that's where you and me met, basically, the hangar in yes. Warsaw. And uh, just in general, like Poland is not on the radar in the world, you know, and I thought, damn, man, we need to at least do as much as we can to, to show also your country and the community there and, you know, the knowledge that is valuable from within the country. So, yeah. and then if I, I check, if I check your work back then, you know, that's why we met at the, at the Hangar Gym ever. One sample of you I want to just quickly show. I really love how clean your twisting is and how you mastered like certain axes and uh, the approach to level in tricking. And, thank uh, you. Very, thank you very much, mate. Ah, uh, that brings back memories actually now. At Hangar, I love how they, do they still have the airplane up there in the gym? Ah, uh, yes, but I wasn't in, on, in, on this gym like in quite some time because I don't work there anymore. Right now I'm working on Aero Active Park, so I just switch at places because uh, when I was still working on Hangar, I was actually like normal train, uh, trainer. So I was just working there, uh, simply look out for people that come into the gym, uh, teaching them sometimes. And in the meanwhile, I, you know, I was really mad because uh, I wasn't able to control my income. So I've decided to build this uh, trick box project uh, uh, for whole business to teach people tricking and also to get uh, my income in my hands, in my control, uh, so I can get as much money as I as I want for another project. So uh, when I was talking with Hangar about uh, doing this whole thing as a separate business, they actually told me that. Uh, 
they will think about it. And I was like in a hurry to do this. So I decided to go to the concurrent uh, gym, which is Aero Active Park. And uh, they actually they actually agreed for that. They actually say that, yes, we would love to uh, have you there. And there is not uh, there is no spring floor on the Aero Active Park. But still, I was like, you know, with the broken leg. So I couldn't do much on the spring floor. They had like really good trampolines and head rack. And I went there and I just started to work there. So since I just moved into the Aero, uh, it was like five or no five or six months when I last time uh, was on Hunger. Okay, okay, I see. But the gym you are at now um, also has spring floor and is it also as much equipped as uh, as heavily equipped? I mean, I think for me Hangar is the best gym. Like, I don't know if there's a other better in a, in Europe. Like. I, I don't know if I ever saw a better equipped gym. I, I haven't been in the States much, but uh, that's proper, you know? Yeah, actually, Hunger was really good uh, with, uh, with the equipment. They also, they also had like, you know, uh, they had the spring floor, they had the air floor into the uh, this, this soft pit, so you can actually learn a lot of stuff. And they also have the, the white trampolines, plus this one big uh, squared trampoline white which is uh, so powerful, like it's crazy. And it was like great time for progress because you could, when you were tired from doing some stuff on spring floor, you could always go on the air floor or on this white trampoline to just clean your stuff, to just clean your tricks. And uh, I loved about it. And I don't know if I told you that before, but uh, when I heard that they were gonna build the hangar, I was living in different city and I was doing completely different stuff. I was like, uh, senior e-learning specialist, so I was had like, you know, this office job. And uh, when I heard about this and I lost my job uh, within this office, I've decided to move to the to Warsaw just to simply uh, trick there because when I saw this equipment, I was like, holy shit, I, I, I want this gym so bad. And that's what happened, that's what happened. When I moved to the Warsaw, I just basically started to train every day there. And uh, it was amazing because, you know, before before that i also had like hip injury and it was like two years of the rehabilitation and i couldn't get back to the form i couldn't train on the spring floor and i've never jumped on the trampolines uh, before too much i remember like one time i just tried to do gain of switching to gain it on the trampoline and i landed in on this um metal construction that holds the trampoline wow. with my it, into, into my face i was like okay no this is not for me but when i tried to, to trick on the trampolines on hangar, I just committed myself to it. So I just decided to learn those flips, learn those twists, uh, because I was really bad at twisting at the beginning. Like in nine years of my tricking, I was uh, mostly doing kicks. So this is why my, like my, main, uh, my main thing that I did was like only kicks, 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 cheat kicks, uh, swing kicks, but never like into uh, corks and fools because I was completely, couldn't understand how does it work. And when I moved to the Warsaw, I decided to actually um, to actually commit myself into learning this stuff because I was I didn't know how this how this works, how the arms working, how the uh, legs should be guiding the whole rotation. And this gym actually allowed me to uh, to learn this because you know this white trump was great for learning stuff. You, you could you wasn't using much of uh, falls on it. So you could like actually repeat this stuff every day for like two, three hours. And that's how I uh, got better with those twists and, uh, and flips. I just simply used a lot of trampolines. Um, and it was like, you know, one year of doing just trampolines. I just left ground. I just wasn't doing in one year, nothing on spring floor. And it was like one year of grinding on the trampoline. And then when I went on the airflow, because I decided to get the stuff uh, on the hardest uh, surfaces, when I get this on the airport, turns out actually I had pretty bad technique from the trampoline because I wasn't doing this hard, uh, this hard ground exercises still. So I had to learn this uh, one more time and I was like another year on the airflow. And then after those two years, I finally got into the street floor and just put uh, everything that I've learned to the trampolines and airflow uh, on the spring floor. And it actually worked out so pretty good. So you, you basically, um transferred in three in three steps from tramp you learned the twisting then you took well, then you took the air track 
and then you went to the spring film. Yes, exactly, exactly. Because, you know, I was like, uh, I didn't know if it's gonna work, but I saw like, you know, Jack Farmer Brown and also many other trickers uh, were really good on the trampolines. They was like killing absolutely like crazy stuff on those tramps and even log swings. And also Abel Martin, I remember he, he learned those uh, the swings that he did on the trampoline and then put it on the spring floor. And I decided like to, to see if it's gonna work on me. And it really, it really oh, I'm sorry. It really worked on me well, uh, but uh, it was like a lot of, a lot of learning the basics. Like the basics were more important uh, at the beginning. You know, I was like when I learned full, actually went already into the double full uh, and into the triples. Still with not the best technique. And what actually helped me a lot is actually learning the basics, uh, the basics of uh, gymnastics stuff. So like, you know, like corbett, like uh, guiding you twist with your. Uh, hands and guiding you flip with your legs because I was most likely like you know putting my head back and then into the twist and when I've learned that actually your legs doing the flip while you're doing with your torso and your arms uh, twist it was like you know eye-opening and this way I could actually do better stuff on air floor and then on a spring floor and turns out you know at the end of those three years of the progress when I broke my uh, dislocated my ankle broke my leg um, this technique was like, uh, I could actually, uh, on the same day, go on the trampoline, do some stuff like swings on the trampoline, then go on the spring floor and uh, without losing technique, I, I could also do like on the spring floor, air floor, uh, whatever I would like to, uh, I would like to train. So that was actually, you know, at the beginning, I didn't know that it's gonna work this way. I thought like I'm gonna land on the trampoline and it will be like, you know, only trampoline and then uh, maybe some someday spring floor but it actually worked out, worked out really well when I started to mix it uh, air floor, spring and trap at the same time. So, like, I remember that's, that's how you also taught me back then when we did a bit of tuning up my flip rotation in my, in my foot, but that's, you made a lot of tutorials. I mean, people should definitely know and we'll find ways how to promote it, but you're going global anyway and you'll probably do some English subtitle things or maybe I can also endorse in some ways through hyperbolic 2022 like make a challenge where somebody that translates it in Poland and just makes a voiceover in English or subtitles gets like five bucks or anything you know and in that token I want to work on something like this and just mention it here but I saw like you have a whole archive of quality like from trampoline learning twisting basic tricking tutorials, then technical tutorials and some things I really find interesting are the simple things are actually the setups and transitions. If they're not good, then, you know, even the trampoline technique can be good, but if you not master the setup, you don't get power on the real floor. And um, there was one thing I really like. How do I can drop this? Screen, here we go. Like the pivot setup, and not cakes. Here we go. Because you talked about this in one recent thing at home. Like, what do you approach about blocking and getting swing power? Maybe you have some tips and uh, how you how you would again master like double twists, double corks. And uh, what is your progression and how through the years you find it was the most effective for you if you want to upgrade your technique and uh, refine? Because you, I mean, you relearn things basically on trampolines. It's like learning everything from scratch, if, if I understand correctly. Yes, yes. Um, uh, um, just uh, to re resume all the stuff. You're asking me about uh, how to relearn those techniques, the, like bad habits, and uh, put them in, in, in some fresh, uh, in some fresh mindset. Yeah, exactly. Like how, what, what you would say, like a good progression is, you know, because you mentioned basic fundamentals, and um, and basic fundamentals must be right. You must understand lower body and upper body, how it works together, and you know what are what are crucial basics you would recommend anybody. To work on and um, how to progress from one element to the others what is your approach to it and uh, then yeah that's that's the main point I'm interested in how you see 
are you i mean how we everybody there's a there's a different way to to a goal but there's always an efficient way at the end you know yes uh, so basically i would say at the beginnings uh, don't be afraid to experiment a lot and uh, because a lot of uh, tricker trickers get uh, locked down with their own style so you know like this is the way i'm uh, doing tricks i do lots of kicks i do lots of uh, this and this and this and uh, when they try something new they don't put the same effort that, that they actually did at the beginning when they're learning those tricks they are doing right now so when they have for example uh, the gainer they actually felt you know okay it's, it's pretty good i'm actually feeling great with this move i'm just gonna spawn the gainers 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 but for example they are really bad at uh, raises or gambies for, for example they have really like bad uh, but Bands, which is also the case with me because I'm not really uh, good with the bridges, um, and they live in live this live in this move, and I did the same through the years. So at the beginning uh, of my tricking, I just focused on kicks. I just really didn't care about twisting, about flipping. I just uh, left this uh, completely, and my style started to uh, deteriorate. It's actually getting worse and worse and worse because I wasn't putting any new tricks. And if you feel that uh, you you get like plateau or some regression in your progress, um, just leave the style uh, totally. Just throw it into the garbage. Forget about this and simply focus on uh, only new tricks. And this is a great way to refresh your nervous system, refresh your body. For example, for me, I was all, always doing grass tricks. I was always doing like on the gym, maybe some trying, you know, into the double pulls, double corks. I also did like double corks and double pulls uh, back then. But it was terrible technique. It wasn't the same technique I use right now. Uh, I decided to to leave it, just, to just lose my style, to just completely lose my tricks uh, and start to learn something new. And it's totally okay because if you want to progress through like years and if you want to train like all your life, then one year uh, without your style and going to new tricks will be like totally okay because you're just gonna still build up for uh, another years uh, to come uh, with your tricking. So uh, just leave your old style, focus on new tricks, and just really get deep into uh, this topic. For example, when I started uh, the tricking, um, I, I felt good kicks, and I decided to um, focus myself to train like a taekwondo or karate guy. Because, you know, I, I saw they're stretching a lot, I saw they're doing basic kicks a lot, so I just simply like embodied their mindset of this karate taekwondo uh, guy and I was doing like all the time kicks in front of my mirror all the time stretching and this way I could actually get much better kicks when I went to the uh, hangar to learn flips I've decided to learn how the gymnastics uh, do, the, do their stuff or like acrobatics I'm sorry from, from water so basically I just stopped uh, doing any kicks for like one year except like hyper hooks, which was like completely new techniques uh, technique for me. And I just, on, I was only learning uh, the way that the, the gymnastics do the stuff, like those layouts, like, you know, even like basic stuff, like landing on your butt, landing on your stomach, landing on your back on the trampoline, uh, twisting from your back, uh, doing flips from your stomach. Completely so like back to scratch. Yes, completely back to scratch. And this is uh, actually a really good way to refresh your tricking because uh, for me, I'm not really good when I'm learning a lot of stuff at the same time. For example, if I'm learning uh, kicks and twists and some gambies and some stuff, for me, the, what is works the best is actually master kicks, master flips, master twists, what, one at the same time, and then put it back together uh, so it will work. And the same thing I actually did with kicks and the same thing I actually did with uh, on the hangar. I, was, I just simply left my tricks and just focused on just doing uh, twisty, twisty combos. This way I could actually uh, get them uh, together much uh, much better than I was. And the progress on the hangar was actually really, uh, really fast. It was really fast because I was doing the trampolines. I've learned how to jump on the trampolines, actually. I've learned how to use uh, the air floor. And it also takes time because I thought, like, I'm going to do this in, like, half year and I'm just going to go on the split floor and... <laughs> Uh, you know, it, it will be over. Longer than expected. <laughs> yes, yes. And actually it actually took me like two and a half year 
to get those uh, twists so good that actually I can feel like totally comfortable on the trampoline air track and spring floor doing the same motion all the time. So it takes time and as, as you are living your style, just remember you're gonna live it for a long time. If, when you're gonna live it, then you're gonna learn some tricks and how you're gonna learn them. The, simp the best way is to actually really focus on uh, those, those schemes, though how, how, uh, all the, how this motion uh, works. For me, I started to learn uh, from Greg Rowe. I mean, you, you probably know this guy, Greg Rowe trampoline. He just posts a lot of stuff. And he was also posting uh, some tutorials from twisting. And you know, when I started to do tricks on the trampoline, I was tricking with like uh, on soft legs, but my legs was like this, literally. I was punching on the tramp and I was like leaning backwards with my head and just doing twisting. So th those twists, actually, I, I could actually learn like double pulls, uh, double corks. Okay, it was like, you know, it's working, like, let's, let's say it's working. Yeah. <laughs> Only when I started to actually realize that your feet actually generate the flip rotation, uh, your hands then go into the twisting, and you're helping yourself with your torso, with twisting uh, like this. This is the way when you uh, don't feel like dizzy in, your, in the air, because your head is not moving, your head is it, it's literally like one place, your eyes are open, your legs is doing the flip, so it's like slow flip with controlled rotation, and uh, it's really good to learn like super basics. Like when you, for example, for me, when I started those, uh, doing those trump stuff, um, I actually got really good at triple pulls, like then, then to the quad pull, uh, when I learned just normal layout. Just the normal layout flip from standing position, just the normal packet back flip. Uh, when, I, when I felt that my body, my muscles are activated uh, in a proper way, this also takes time and this also takes uh, like you know a lot of a lot of basic exercises to actually understand how to flex those muscles how to keep them in the air so you're not gonna go like oh, let's open it up let's relax in the uh, in the mid air uh yeah <laughs> that's 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 in the that's in the short that's in, that's that's like hmm. there's actually a lot of stuff from it because you know when i started to uh, learning new tricks and I just started to see uh, what takes I it turns out most uh, was because of my old injuries for example like you know my legs were like jiggly on the trampoline because I was too afraid to flex my right leg which was uh, twisted a couple of times and I just you know turns out I was like walking in bad, uh, in bad position like my hips were turned and I was like uh, this, this is called like duck butt. So your, your butt is not like in the line uh, like this, but you will do It's more like this. So your butt up, your butt up. So you cannot flex uh, properly your uh, your muscles. Uh, so I bought the book, which was like uh, super low part from. I know, I know, from Kelly Starrett. Yes, from, from Kelly Starrett, that's right, that's right. And I had to learn how to stand in, you know, with, with my body straight, so my muscles are activated in front and in the back. I had to stretch my uh, quads, I had to stretch my back, I had to, you know, get my legs in the good shape. It's, so it's reforming, it's, recalibrating and reforming the body from scratch again, same thing. I've been through that journey a couple of times. Yes, that I actually actually I didn't know that I was like you know so much like twisted and so like fucked, you know so sorry to say but so fucked up. <laughs> yes, exactly. But like my body was so fucked up, like I couldn't even stand properly, like like in a straight line uh, in this good position. Like I was, uh, for example, I was walking. Uh, I was my feet. I was walking like on this back of my, and I wasn't activating my fingers. For example, like when I was twisting, I was just using my shoulders to do the twist and not, for example, my fist. Because when I was drawing the motion with my fist, I would like join the motion not with my whole leg, but only with my feet. Uh, this is this was the stuff that actually changed uh, completely the feeling of the twisting and the flipping. But it was also, uh, like as we said, just going back to the basics, just seeing where, where the butt doesn't work. If the butt is not working, for example, if it's like really relaxed, if your butt, your ass is like 
also very jiggly. Uh, you will not gonna be able to perform so double triple flips because you cannot activate properly your stomach. When you have like you know like so relaxed torso, it's also like super hard to uh, to do those stuff properly without hurting yourself. Also, so always definitely. Posture, long-term posture is a crucial thing and so important. And if you're if you're good aligned, then you can just be more efficient and find your right technique and find stuff that works for you in a safe way, basically, long-term. Uh, yes, that's very true, mate. And I also really love that you are actually promoting this stuff a lot on your channel. Uh, like, you know, going into deep squats and stuff like this, because this is really important. And a lot of trainers that uh, actually are super good at tricking uh, let's say let's, the goatee, Michael Gatry, uh, he can do splits front and back uh, to, to the sides. Uh, he can do squat like really easily, he can do bridge really easily. So his body is very mobile and also is really strong. And when he's doing the tricks, there is no place when uh, any of his muscles are unactivated. When he's doing like simple tornado kick, simple pop 360, simple Webster, the whole body is working properly. He's doing the right lines with the flip, uh, it's just pure perfection. I mean, that's because he's the GOAT, the greatest of all time. And I love to watch, love to study his stuff, but also like other trickers. You also had, he, uh, had uh, on your podcast, uh, Ethan Turner, for example. And he's also a great example when, when his body is properly activated, when he's doing touchdown rise into triple cork, it's like super easy for him. And that's because he can actually flex properly, keep the muscles uh, flexed through the air, and you know, speed up when he needs to speed up in the proper way. And it's not like he's joining his arms and just, you know, just feel the relaxation in the chest. When he's joining his arms, his legs will go to it, his hips go over the head because all the muscles are activated. When they are not activated, for example, your middle, your core is not activated, you will not be able to generate uh, those speeds uh, as good as them because you, you will not be able to put your whole body into the air uh, the way they did. And uh, good that you mentioned actually Ethan Turner, because um, I spoke to him about how he approaches training sessions, how he gets into the... Because it's, yes, we can all be technically good and maybe understand what needs to be done, but everybody needs to get into that zone of the mindset, you know, and how, you, how do you approach like these days? Uh, what is your mindset and what is your current training schedule personally looking like you know uh well right now when there was a lockdown i was doing a lot of kicks because i couldn't uh, do anything on the gym uh, and also those corks i was like thinking about getting my leg uh, more hard enough because through one year ago when i dislocated my ankle and broke my bones uh i actually didn't do any break so like, you no, know, on the second day when I went off from the hospital, I just started doing calisthenics. I was like, you know, going on, on, on I don't know how is it called. Like, you know, I was going the crutches, with the, the crutches. I was going with the crutches. I was going on the bars. Warrior. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and I was doing like some, I've decided to, because I was, oh, I was watching a lot of David Goggins. And David Goggins is like really crazy guy, absolutely. And, you know, it, it just inspired me because normally when I had the injury, I was like, you know, like depressed, super sad. And he was like, injury? What the fuck is this? You know, let's let's do, let's do reps uh, even though. And I was starting to do this uh, exercises all the time. And even was like working on the track, like 23 kilometers, for example, uh, to just see if my uh, mind, my body will uh, simply, uh, will, will not collapse if I, if I am going to be able to do this then I'm going to be able to do anything. So I was doing stuff like this and it was like, you know, pretty like going so hard in my head all the time. And after three months, I went back on the trampoline. So even if my body and my uh, bones were not truly regenerated, I was still trying to do quad pulls on the trampoline with with, no, with my broken leg. And I actually landed uh, quad area twist. Because I saw, I saw also you doing with the cast. You had the cast on and you, you went onto the trampolines. I remember I saw some stuff on Instagram. Inspired me, it was good. Yes, yes. You know, I was like focusing all the time on the, on the swings on the trampoline. So I decided to just hunt as many uh, combos with triple cork uh, as I could on the trampoline. Uh, so I can get this body awareness, so I could get my uh, legs, especially my left leg, into this uh, into this super hard mode, 
because I was always walking on my left leg, I was swinging on my left leg, so it was like super used uh, time back there. And like in six, seven months after I broke my leg, uh, I started to do air floor uh, once again. And after this air floor, when I was locked down, I decided to get my leg much more stronger. Uh, my right leg actually, the one that was broke, and into the mobility so I can uh, trick one more time because, you know, I'm not going to show you. Okay. So uh, even I'm going to show you this way. This is my left leg going forward. And that's my right. Wow. And that is, that is all. And I was, I was doing tricks like this for a long time and I've decided to finally, you know, rehabilitate my leg and get back to the normal shape. So right now, after all, this, uh, all those trainings, uh, I started to do some grass sessions and just got back on the air floor. But this time on the third dream in Poland, so this is Stacja Gravitacja. Uh, my last post on the Instagram is from this place uh, because this air floor is kind of like spring floorish. It's not like uh, it's not like this big air floor. It's like very really, very really tiny air floor. But there's a lot of space, so I can practice uh, longer chains with swings uh, because I I I've decided to. Not only do like you know one one two and zero 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 two, but I decided to uh, experiment with swings, with swings like you know rodeo swings, handcuff swings, and uh, mishmash all those stuff. And since I through the lockdown, I was doing a lot of kicks. Uh, I decided to combine uh, all those stuff. Meanwhile, also I've learned uh, gambi and like puzzle rise. It still need to be mastered, but I want to right now focus on incorporating all those tricks all together finally so I can go back to my form uh, that I did before uh, broken leg and with some freshness with totally freshness with some actually it's, it's gonna be totally new style so that's, that's why I'm that's, that's great so you we're gonna become uh, you will become Pavel version v.3 now basically <laughs> <laughs> yes exactly and like in my mind, I'm I'm like super pumped about this because uh, I love uh, tricking. I love doing any tricks. Like corks are my absolutely favorite uh, right now because it doesn't hurt my leg and I can do like uh, lots of them. But like you know, I I I believe like with the proper techniques, with the proper uh, stuff, I can just progress even more and even more. Uh, even though I had those injuries and stuff, and I, I'm not the youngest guy. Uh, in the game because I'm like 31 years old right now, uh, but it doesn't bother me at all because you know. But it's nothing, people... Matteo. Matteo is level 37, I think he said, and he's just going. He will have a surgery, I think, 24th, 24th of July, and he's still tricking with with a torn ACL, I think. Um, very, in yes, yeah. very inspiring. Matteo is a great inspiration for me because I I, caught, I, did, I wasn't trying uh, triple cork on the spring floor yet. And I know since Matteo did this, uh, I'm like, you know, Matteo is my great inspiration. I know I can because There's he no did. There's no excuse now anymore. There's no excuse, I say. Yes, and I really love uh, this guy's spirit because uh, he's like, you know, totally focusing on trick, totally like giving his heart, absolutely his heart uh, to the sport. Uh, so I, I hope he will regenerate, uh, recover really fast, and he can go back to the tricks. Same here, same here. Um, how is your current uh, training and working schedule? What's like your... Well, right now, since the lockdown is over, uh, but actually, people may not know it. Actually, well, people not, don't know it. Uh, I'm a personal trainer, so I work professionally as a personal tricking trainer. And I train on those gyms, like those trampoline parks, uh, people, uh, lots of stuff. And I'm simply trying to teach them the same way I did uh, with my tricks. So through the trampolines, through air track, uh, through the spring floor. Uh, so we actually mix in all, all together, also with movement, with yoga, with calisthenics, uh, so they can actually get the best of their body awareness uh, to incorporate all the, all the tricks they want to uh, learn. So right now I have like, uh, from 15 to 17 uh, uh, hours of the training with my clients and also at the same time I'm uh, doing still like stretching with yoga in the morning uh, 
I'm doing my workouts. Back there, when I started the diet, I was like, it was like two, two workouts per day. It, uh, but right now I switched it because I want to focus more on the tricks uh, and more on the power combos. So I need to have regular rest. It's gonna be probably like uh, three sessions uh, of tricking per per week. And it's always like it's always changing with me because I don't use like the same uh, the same progression pattern. I'm trying to always actualize actualize this pattern. So for example, when I do like light tricks, so I, I'm stretching a lot, doing strengthening. So it's gonna be much more trainings because it's not gonna be that tiring for a nervous system for my body. I can do it much more. But when I'm doing power moves, uh, when I'm doing long combos, I'm actually trying to get my body to regenerate so I can minimize uh, the uh, the possibility of injuring myself. And it's like this, yeah. So I'm, I'm actually, since it's my business, I'm actually working, it's my own business, uh, this Facebook project. Uh, I'm, actually, I'm actually working all the time. It's like all my whole day is scheduled to my work and to my uh, training. And that's all that's actually totally focused on those two things and there is nothing uh, more right uh, right now i just even i even started to stop parking start, stop it to eat some sugars stop it to drinking alcohol uh, smoking weed even though i didn't smoke a lot um but i actually like uh, alcohol and i like uh, sweets so, I actually give it a, so how smoking. many hours would you say per day do you um lock up for your conditioning and tricking and training your personal training i'm it's trying to yeah. if it goes like uh, uh, most likely it's like uh from six to 14 hours per uh, per per week and it's like it's, it's different a lot and i mean it, it depends how i feel it depends how i do but i'm trying to do like you know uh, I'm trying to listen a lot of my body. If I feel great, if I feel like nothing, no, focus, no injuries bothers me, then I'm focusing on uh, getting much uh, lower uh, rate of the tricking. For like, for example, like only six hours per uh, per week. But I'm gonna focus on power moves. I'm gonna focus on uh, different combinations so I can just totally went. And then after this time, uh, I'm going into the more hours of the training and this will be more conditioning. For example, I'm doing yoga right now, and there's a great channel on YouTube, uh, it's called Yoga with Cassandra. Uh, absolutely amazing. This girl is uh, like crazy. It's not like, you know, this, this you know, how, how's it called? Um, like this regular yoga class on YouTube, when the girl just simply bending her back, and, oh, yeah, no, I'm just gonna chill out. This uh, girl is absolutely murderous with her yoga. You, you will not gonna, uh, let just just till the end of this session you're gonna be dying at the end of this yoga session and it's great because all your muscles work uh, your legs you know getting flexible your body is getting more like um, loose loose yeah. yes 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 and it's great and also like doing calisthenics not not doing much right now uh, more like trying to get my leg uh, into the proper working yeah, and it's uh, like I'm trying to not doing like you know one uh, one session of just uh, working on my leg and just leave it. I'm trying to more like doing uh, through all through all the day through all the day. I'm trying to do something that will help uh, to get my leg more mobility. For example, when I'm walking, I'm trying to push my fingers. I'm just uh, just trying to push my fingers uh, onto the ground so it will activate much more muscles and. It works better for me than just doing uh, like one session per, per day and just leave it all. Because it's all like in those habits. When you have habits that you, that you are working on your back of your leg all the time and everything is relaxed, it's much more, uh, uh, it's, it's, mo it's, you have more, oh, what is it called? You can get injured uh, faster when you have like le legs like this because you're gonna learn like this. This is your habit, how you're gonna work. And when you're gonna try to activate it like one hour per day or just only on the training, it will not gonna help you at all. And when I'm going all the time, activating my muscles, working uh, to my, you know, flexibility, working to my strength, uh, checking if I am just have good posture all the time. This way, when I'm going on the training, I don't need to think about this. 
because to uh-huh. all day uh, from the morning when I woke up uh, to the uh, to the evening, I was doing all the time something that helped my body uh, to get my muscles activated all the time. When they are activated, uh, I don't need to worry about you know lazy legs, like this jiggly legs. You're the fortified. Shower. You're fortified for the session, basically. Yes, exactly. So I'm more like a big fan of doing uh, through whole day some stuff that will help you uh, get better with your tricks than just doing like one uh, one hour or something. It's true, it's true. So I, I can relate to that. I can because then you're always prepared and ready, kind of. Uh, you you don't expose yourself to be in a situation where you didn't prepare well enough. You know, just prepare well enough. Because I mean, it's extreme extreme stuff we do. Not everybody does it you know so it's it's just this this committed persistent consistency thing with habits and rituals that help you you know and it it compounds basically like interest in the bank yes that's that's very true brother because like those like as you said uh, those habits and rituals are like the most important thing about this when your habits are like you know drinking beer all the time and just couch potating like you know lying through all day or just sitting in the computer your muscles will adapt to this uh, way of life when you when you're sitting a lot your body will try to compensate with your body position with your posture when you know when you're just hanging all the time like this it will gonna affect your health when you're doing a lot of this without uh, moving your day all the time uh, it will be hard but of course like you know as as i had the job lots of people have it so the best way when you have even though the sitting job uh, is the best way to actually try to move through all the day all the time and this will affect you much better than just one uh, hour of the training or something to strengthen your body well, what's interesting i remember also michael Guthrie mentioning it he's always like squatting trying to be ready, you know, like have his body in a state of, like you mentioned earlier, uh, mobile, flexible, like a, like an animal, you know, we, we are animals, we should be able to be ready anytime and that means also recovered as fast enough and I'm also a very big promoter of recovery and food and nutrition, uh, it's rituals and habits, but it must just be relearned because we learn it different when we grow up and from, from parents and environment and we must just reteach ourselves and um, that also that also now what you're talking about uh, relates good to me because I started cleaning up all my stuff and trying to find ways to make it more controlled and do it both ways so that my body is uh, in, in a good balance you know tricking can create a lot of imbalances but if you re- learn the basics both ways or just use them as a light session with conditioning. I just feel tremendous uh, benefits from that, you know, learning stuff both ways, at, at least the basics, you know, light, light tricks and uh, fundamental. Um, there are also frequency matters more than, and quality than just doing like one hour all out uh, and destroying yourself. Uh, I can relate totally to that. Yes, yes. Oh, that's really good. I also, uh, so that uh, Johannes Attila was doing also tricks on, on the dark side uh, with, with normal. I wasn't practicing this a lot, but I would love to hear more uh, from you how is how it's gonna affect your tricking and how it's gonna affect will, your body. I will, let you, I will let you know, man. Like I'm, I'm just now excited to go train tonight because uh, we have a session at 7, seven and having yeah. this positive talk and exchange now is a, is a great thing to kickstart the day as a tricker. Uh, what, what's your dub twisting advice? Because I talked about Matteo, you know, that he said the variations matter a lot and uh, like hypers and 1.5s and mic returns and what is your approach to if you want to bring your twist to a higher level basically? What would you think about it? Well, actually the best advice uh, was given by Michael, Michael Guthrie. I do not remember uh, on which tutorial it was, but he was actually saying about micro tweet. So he wasn't just going like uh, doing one, for example, you can do one normal full and you want to go for the double full. Uh, try not to do already into going into the double full just just for a sec. You can actually try this on the trampoline plenty of times because trampoline is great for learning twists. You can actually 
uh, instead of doing like two, three times and landing on your back and hurting yourself, uh, you can actually do this like 50 times. Oh, well, 50 is actually too much, but you can actually do it like 20 of times uh, per session uh, so you can feel better your body. But the best way is to actually learn half of the twist or like uh, one, one fourth of the twist. So you just go in into the normal pool. You don't thinking about double pool. And when you're going to spot the ground, you simply will open uh, with your torso or just, just your torso and hips uh, twist. And, and just in, instead of landing like in front of, uh, in front of the place you are starting, you're just gonna let slightly uh, to the side. And then you're gonna add this little bit, little bit, little bit, little bit. Uh, so it will give you better body awareness because uh, when we are doing double full, the hardest part is actually keeping the same flip that we did with the one twist. And that's like the hardest part to, part to do this. And when we're learning uh, to the micro twist that we just going overhead into the normal one twist, and then we're gonna add up with our torso it will not over rotate us. It will not gonna suddenly, uh, you know, twist us into double full. You just simply gonna feel much better control when you're learning um, from uh, from those micro twists. And also learning to guide your flips with your feet. It's really important. So you're not gonna lean backwards uh, to, you know, generate with your torso flip because that's the worst way to actually learning some twists. When you feel that your uh, feet are going fast over your head. Uh, you're just gonna feel like this big circle, like this big circle uh, drowning with your legs. When you feel it in the full, you can also feel it in double full, in triple and quad, so it's easier to incorporate. Also, like you know, when you're doing twists only with your arms, it's really hard to generate a fast rotation. When you actually twist in whole your torso and hips, so you, you're gonna, I'm gonna, I don't know if you're gonna see this, when you're gonna start this and you're just gonna use something like this with the twisting, it's much easier to uh, generate really fast rotation. But that also, uh, that's actually at the end, the best way is to actually learn, um, learn uh, those, those micro twists at the beginning and then you can, uh, you know, level up for another uh, thing, which is like guiding with your feet, uh, guiding with your arms and your torso, uh, so hold the twist. And also when you're doing like single twists, uh, you can always spot the ground. I mean, it's not. Uh, you shouldn't do this. It's not. Uh, it's not like you know the gymnastics way to do the flips. But for me, when I'm doing like single full, like single layout full over my head on the trampoline, I always spot the ground. When I take off, I don't go like up. I'm just simply looking over my shoulder, trying to reach my head like this, and just simply spot the whole the time the you know the rotation. This way is much easier to do those micro twists because when you're doing, uh, like, you know, losing, losing the sight of the ground, then twisting, and then trying to add this, add, uh, this micro twist, uh, is hard to do. But when you are spotting all the time ground and you see that you're just using your torso uh, to just, you know, generate more twisting rotation, it's super easy. And it's also uh, lots of, there's lots of control uh, from that. Also, if you don't, uh, don't feel the back twisting, try to learn front twisting uh, to the Barani or like uh, try to learn aerial twist because aerial twist is like super easy on the trampoline. For example, I am i don't feel that much like Rudy's and Trentis. I'm better with aerial twists and we also in tricking uh, use more like the setup from aerial twist because it's kind of similar to what we are doing from the cartwheel. Uh, it's also easier to, uh, to learn through the aerial twist because it's also easier to learn spot in the aerial twist to the ground. Yeah, I like, yeah. I like that, I like that. And uh, I never asked you, man, how did you actually got into tricking? You know, like how you got away of tricks? I, I, I don't remember or reconcile. Well, uh, it actually began with nunchaku. Because I uh, like old uh, nunchaku in my father's closet. And it was like, you know, I just grabbed it a couple of times, just hit it in my head. And I was like, no, nah, no, it's, it's, it's not for me totally. But at, uh, in the high school, I've decided to, okay, I'm, I, I want to be good at something. I started with some uh, gym, because I, I was also playing in uh, Grand Theft Auto San Andreas. And in this game, it was like this main character, CJ, who just was super skinny. And I was back there, like super skinny guy with no muscles at all. 
and he went to the gym with this CJ, this, uh, this main character, and he was started to pump in some iron, and this way he just got to the bullet, and I was like, holy <laughs> shit. Yes, I was like, this is this easy, okay? So I just bought uh, myself uh, some, uh, some iron, and I just started working out. And at the same time, it was like, you know, it's, it was getting super boring, because, you know, we was just always repeating the same stuff, and I, I've heard about this nunchaku, so I decided to give it a try. And uh, I really liked it because, you know, one nunchaku, then I built the two. Uh, then I also like, this is like my second passion right now, uh, because tricking, number one. I also do freestyle with weapons. I do like double nunchaks, double katanas, double kamas, double bow, uh, double kusarigamas. I love this stuff also. And one day I was like, you know, downloading some stuff from Torrance, like, you know, back there when you were just meeting with your friend and just simply trying to find some, uh, some cool videos. Uh, and we found Matt Emig from Capital Classics uh, 2000 uh, year form. And he was doing nunchucks with like B twist into the flash, into the gainer, like Randolph's flash. And I was like, and he, puts them under, he puts them under his leg. Yes, yes. I, I was like so impressed. I was like totally in shock. I was watching this uh, flicks and I was like, I need to learn this. I need to do this. And uh, thanks God, like some uh, guys in the high school, turns out they can do some flips. So they teach me like fifth lock and back flip. So that was my first tricks. And uh, I just started to do them myself. And since I was, I had only grass, so I decided to learn some kicks and stretch my and this is the way I started to uh, how old have you How old have you been when you did your first like flip or trick, basically? 17. 17, okay. Seven, yes, yeah, 17. Crazy. Yeah, that, that was a good time. <laughs> I mean, I love it. Every day I was doing some grass sessions. I was kicking all the time in my backyard. And yes, that was, that was really cool. That was... <laughs> It's a journey. It has been a journey. But like you said, video game character, it's, it's a game, man. We, we just played with more experience points and we can upgrade the characters in, in different attributes, different ways. And, uh, and GTA also for me is a legendary game. Um, but other thing I also wanted to just round this whole beautiful conversation we had up with is um, the, goals, the, the goals for the year for you. What, do you have any specific goals uh, and targets for this crazy decade 2020? Well, uh, definitely like this lockdown showed me that uh, my business wasn't prefer, uh, prepared for those black swans. Like those black swans is like simply the events that occur like this lockdown. So we just have the pandemic uh, on the world wide and uh, I wasn't totally prepared uh, for that. So. Definitely, I want to uh, rebuild my business. The thing I, I really want to focus is still personal trainings, is still like learning uh, people in a person because I believe this works the best. Uh, when I have like, you know, Padawan, there is a master in Padawan, and this way you're teaching uh, somebody. This is working really good, and I still want to do this. But I also want to go like uh, online more. I want to do more tutorials when I'm going to repair my microphone. Uh, I want to do like some English version definitely of the tutorials uh, and I have like three podcasts, three, uh, three videos of, of the podcast and I want to make them in English and also post on, uh, on, this, uh, on this site. Also like my three box project on the Facebook, I've decided to rebuild this page and actually uh, use it more for like, you know, showing samplers uh, for the trickers, like making some compilations. Uh, so others will be much more, will we'll get the deserved attention. You know, for example, like Marcin Gorny, uh, the, the, first, the first video is like super underrated tricker and uh, like really good, he's, he's really good with a great style. Or like Paulina Shafruga also, uh, there will be plenty more uh, of the people. So I want to go like a little bit more global with the Streetbox product and uh, a little bit more online with my uh, business. As it goes for the tricks, I would love to uh, rebuild my mobility in my leg so I can go back on the spring floor once again. But right now, since I'm training on the air floor mostly, uh, it's also okay because I can just trick. It's, it's also great. It's also great. And with uh, elements, definitely longer uh, swing combos, definitely much more advanced uh, and mixing it with kicks and 
uh, some new stuff that I'm working on right now. That's good, man. And definitely, I, as I mentioned earlier, I would love to invite you to, to um, get your YouTube verified um, on Brave. I don't know if you checked it out yet. But if I, was, you... I wasn't uh, like checking out deeply. Yeah, yeah. So if you if you just get verified, maybe you know we can endorse from my side too through the challenges in future. Because I mean, you do really really good content. You just checked your trick box, uh, and samplers is a thing we should also in generally just endorse more and see how we as a community can grow and share valuable knowledge to each other to just push each other to level up, you know, like in the video game, level up and as more as we have accessible experience points, as more we can level up. And that's when, yeah. I don't know if you saw it, they just sent me like an advertisement. Uh, and uh, if I open the advertisement, I get rewarded in that Brave to token. And um, then I can take those Brave tokens, for instance, here. And I, I, it's not from my pocket, it's just from the ad now I clicked. I get rewarded in that bad token, so I can send it to you or anybody that is very quiet. For instance, twenty bad is like five dollars, and I and I bet there is some young teenager tricker in Poland that will translate one of your videos for five dollars, maybe. Uh, you know, just create like challenges together. And if you have any ideas or concept or challenges, I created some already with Matteo and other other trickers. Um, Let's let's get it together, you know, tell it to me or anybody that is listening to this this podcast now basically uh, has the chance to come up with an idea for the community. Because it's, it's not for me, that's just a concept I want to put out and everybody that, uh, that uh, wants to support the community in another way, you know, every couple of persons, like you mentioned earlier, David Goggins, uh, he has this 40% rule, but if, if we every month just get 1% better, it's better, you know, it, it adds up. So that's why I want to share this and uh, see what we can do in the future together. I want to do this more and uh, for me it was a pleasure uh, to hear from you and it motivated me to get, get, my, uh, get my tricks tuned up again tonight. Uh, I'm gonna definitely do some micro turn stuff. I want to get my dubs back, but more controlled with a new body because I also had a couple of issues uh, with shoulder and ankle. And I was fixing things. I just wanted to fortify and be ready again to, to power hard. I haven't done any dubs for past three months since I left Cape Town. And I, I took this as an opportunity to... Johannes actually inspired me and the, Hans, the passing of Hans Wickeling, rest in peace, to just get back to the fundamentals, the basics, the scratch, and rebuild that retune it again so that long term I, I, I just remaster things better with a new body. And uh, yeah, I'm amped, man. I'm, I'm, I'm thankful for this conversation. Yeah, me too. And I also wish you like, you know, a really good uh, tricking session. And uh, one more time, I, I hope that you're gonna <laughs> spawn those dubs like crazy. And I, I really will. want getting you into the dark side uh, with tricks. I will also try this. I was doing like so so little of the dark side tricks. So I'm, I'm gonna definitely try this. I just started, for instance, doing like cartwheels and basic kicks. I spam them as little conditioning sessions. Like when I don't feel like having a power session, I just started to implement mo more of those little like light recovery session, still like a 20 minutes good, like cardio thing, you move back and forth, like hook, cartwheel, hook, cartwheel, both ways. And uh, it, it did a lot of wonders for ankles and general condition. A lot of concrete, concrete stuff. Not yet triples like Johan on concrete, but um, at least dark side tricking on concrete. <laughs> that's awesome, that's awesome. It, it will really work good on the balance in your muscles. For sure, for sure, man. Uh, then let's let's see what we can do together. If you come up with ideas, let me know. The community, if you come up with ideas, drop a comment. Check out Trickbox. Uh, I will put everything into the description. And uh, let's see to get your stuff translated, or maybe if 
if people want to endorse you, you know, I don't know how much a new mic is. Maybe we can set up some cool. Even you within your community, you can uh, set up set up a new challenge like saying, "Hey, listen for the three best samplers." Whatever you know, we, we donate fifteen dollars, and uh, you get a mic probably like for eighty, ninety dollars. So if that is done more frequently, there are ways to. Just motivate each other, help each other, create quality content, exchange, exchange quality value and insight information. So um, yeah, that's that's from my side. What, what I what I just came up with and thought about, and that's how I want to end it. To keep it lean, mean, and clean and hyperbolic. Let's keep leveling uh, and and do many more things like this in future. I'll also have my mic back. Once this crazy traveling restrictions uh, are over, and uh, maybe maybe we have a session together one day. I would love that. I would love that. Yo, thank yeah. you very, thank you much, very much for having me. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> let's let's get, let's get those gains, man. Let's get those gains. That's the way, man. And uh, like Goggins would say, stay hard. Yes, absolutely. Stay hard. <laughs> Stay hard, brother, man. It was a pleasure. And uh, we, we chat soon. Pleasure was all mine. Peace out, man.